Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Brett Madigan from Bega Games and this is Bega Reviews Homefront The Revolution for PC. Homefront The Revolution is a first-person shooter developed by Dan Buster Studios and published by Deep Silver for Xbox One, PS4 and PC. Before we get into this review, I need to outline the development background for the game itself. Why? Because I feel it's important to note what happened to the project, which could have potentially caused serious issues for the title going forward. The game was originally speculated to be a sequel to the original Homefront game, though the original publisher, THQ, wanted Chaos Studios to develop the game, but the studio was closed by THQ in 2011. At a later date, THQ announced that Crytek UK had taken over the project. Shortly after this announcement, THQ filed for bankruptcy, so the state of the new Homefront game was unclear as to whether or not the public would ever see the sequel. Crytek bought the rights to develop the game, yet Deep Silver owns the rights to the franchise. This includes all assets and the name itself. In 2014, Crytek announced the game was called Homefront The Revolution and was scheduled for release in 2015. Sometime later, Crytek started to have financial issues and had to pull out of developing the new game. The game was delayed until 2016, and Dan Buster Studios was left with the project. The Revolution is the second game to have the Homefront name. It's supposed to be a reboot to the franchise. Was it worth it this time around? Let's find out. The story is based on an alternate world scenario where a North Korean company called Apex has dominated the market for technology, then moved into creating weapons. America couldn't resist. In 2025, the American dollar tanked, and the debt to the North Koreans had become uncontrollable, with a large portion of the country becoming unemployed. The failing government defaulted on their debt. This is when North Korea decided to take charge. Everything America had ever bought from the Apex Corporation had a back door, which allowed the North Koreans to turn off the American military with a single button press. This is when the KPA or the Korean People's Army steps in with the notion to help rebuild the American society. Eventually, the KPA overtakes America, the revolution is to gain back your country, and your freedom starts with you. Drones, potential off, terrorists. You play as Ethan Brady, a new resistance fighter who is waiting for Benjamin Walker, who is the leader of the resistance against the KPA that occupies your city, Philadelphia. Walker is treated as the voice of freedom in this world, so much so that the entire resistance group relies heavily on what he has to say. Before Walker is able to get to the safe house, the KPA has already begun a raid. This implies the KPA know about the Resistance and their schedule. Or the Resistance has a mole. If the KPA were able to locate the supposed safe house, doesn't really quite make sense. More on that later. During the raid, you and a few other members are tied up and held for questioning. Walker storms in and saves the day, gets shot in the leg, but at least he saves you. It is your job to take Walker to safety. This is where the plot holes arise and become more open than an open world game. If the KPA know about your safe house location, why would you think it would be a great idea to set Walker down on a couch in the same safe house that was raided not even half a minute ago? This is all within the first 15 minutes of the game. Surely the correct approach would have been for Walker or Brady to contact other members of the resistance and ask for an evacuation therefore requiring the player to take out enemies within a set time period. This is not what happens. Instead, the game gives you a phone and tells you to find a resistance stash, ammo and health packs, etc. I cannot understand how this was would be the first mission. But hurry, Brady, we don't have long. Now, I could sit here and go through every plot hole within this game, yet I'm not going to. I will, however, mention a prominent one. And that is, if the KPA is supposed to be this technologically advanced group, then why haven't they gone door to door and found your safe houses or even your stronghold? They clearly have the manpower to do so if they were able to take control of the United States. This whole idea is very unbelievable at this point of the game. Homefront The Revolution is a mostly open world game with several environments to explore. With that said, these environments are held back by a loading screen. There's a few gameplay elements different to that of the original game, such as scavenging, safe houses, hacking tools, upgrades, and convertible weapons. Scavenging allows the player to find scrap or items to create equipment during gameplay, so that was a neat touch. Though there isn't much to find within the world itself due to the lack of searchable objects. The store is basically used to buy new weapons, new upgrades, and consumable items. At first glance, you might not find a problem with this, 
though I did, simply because if you're in a situation where your country has been overrun by an international source, what need for money would your resistance have if you are making weapons out of collected scrap? Therefore, the money system is redundant. There is a new element added to upgrading. Rather than using money to upgrade weapons, you are required to take over these red markers on your map. These are secondary missions that consist of mostly hacking a terminal. Now forgive me, but I don't see how these points that I get from doing these secondary missions will allow me to modify my gun into a convertible weapon, or even upgrade my equipment. The gameplay is a little all over the place. You're a resistance fighter, yet you spend a large portion of the game hacking into KPA control towers? This is particularly strange because in most cases there aren't any KPA soldiers present, so why would we, being the resistance, care about an abandoned building that the KPA aren't even using? The key element to the game is recruiting for your revolution, though for less than half of the game your sole objective is to try and rescue Walker. It was revealed later that he is reciting a script that is in favour of the KPA's outlook. So, after four hours of trying to find a way to save him, the resistance changed their mind nearly instantly. The developer tried to display emotion within the characters, but instead presented overly long, horrible dialogue. As a player, I don't want to sit there and listen to these characters. I don't care about the fighting over these pointless, trivial tasks. At the end of it, the player is the only person undertaking the mission. It's over. The game's idea of a revolution is essentially Brady doing everything for them, with potential resistance troops running around the map. You can recruit them, which is understandable, but why don't I get a team of people? Why am I always alone for these missions? I could outline every issue with the gameplay, but there isn't enough time. Just in case any of you are thinking that I'm being overly harsh, there's a broken car sequence at the end of the game. Keep in mind that this is a scripted scene, so people actually made this. Being developed on CryEngine can mean two things. The game will either be next level realistic and run poorly, or it will have subpar visuals and run like a donkey. Sadly, Homefront the Revolution suffers from the latter. Visually not impressive for a 30 plus gigabyte game, even maxed out the visuals still look blurred or just have a lack of definition. The game suffers from several technical issues in relation to visual effects, but the most prominent issue is God Rays because these are used in buildings which cause the outside environment to look white, or completely blinding the player. It is unclear as to if this was the intention, or if someone in the art department didn't quite finish the job. I take it back. This issue beats all other visual problems this game suffers. This problem was potentially caused by incorrectly applied alpha textures causing in-game assets to disappear. This, to me, shows a blatant lack of care in the environment and a lack of playtesting with the environment. If you're going to have an objective nearby, the player should never expect an issue like this to be present. The sound design within Homefront the Revolution is a little odd at the best of times. By odd, I mean the fact that explosions cut out all of the game sounds during gameplay, or the fact that the sound is outright delayed in the ending scene of the game. How many stages did this game actually pass through? I mean, seriously, how many? Issues like this make it hard to pinpoint anything decent in relation to sound. Other than the issues present, the sound effects were mostly your typical FPS average. The concept of Homefront, the IP itself, is a great idea and it's something fresh, right? But I feel like every time the name gets used, it's already tainted because the original game had issues during development, but not to the same extent this game went through. There are so many issues with this game, I cannot simply go through them all. The game felt rushed and was simply an unfinished AAA title. This is absolutely unacceptable. Even after being completely aware of the issues this game has, 
The developer even misled the consumer in the 1.4 patch by saying, and I quote, Save stalls. We have optimized the number of checkpoint save locations throughout the single player campaign. This means that the short pauses that the player encounters are reduced, and the game will now inform you that it is saving. How can you sit there as a developer and say that you fixed save stalls when the game itself still stalls or stutters, get worse, the deeper you go into the campaign? This makes no sense. What, what did you fix? Sure, you might have less saves here and there, but it, the game still has sections where it does pause dramatically or stutter dramatically, and it's very, very annoying. I do want to ask, it is great that you finished the project, but why did you accept it as is? I cannot understand how this was accepted by Deep Silver as a final build or a finished product. That is why Homefront the Revolution gets a 2 out of 10 from me. You can check out the written review over at BegoGames.com. My name is Brett Madigan, see you guys next time, peace out.